In this episode of Virtual Orchestration, I'll show you how to program a realistic harp glissando. I'm Andreas Björk, and I'm a composer of music for film and television. I'm also an expert in orchestral mockups and all manners of music technology for media scoring. I serve on the faculty in the screen scoring department at Berklee College of Music. Although many sample libraries offer fully sampled glissandi, they often don't do exactly what you want. They might not offer the exact length or shape that you want, or end on the note that you need them to, or even offer the exact scale that you need. Therefore, it's useful to know how to quickly create any kind of glissando you could imagine from a regular playable harp sample. For this example, I'm going to sequence a glissando that is so particular that it would be impossible to find in any pre-recorded harp glissando library. It's built on a D-flat major pentatonic scale, but starting from the second scale degree, E-flat, going up and back down over four octaves twice. Here's what that sounds like on a real harp. So the first thing I'm going to do is record a bunch of notes for the glissando by simply dragging my hand across the keyboard over the required number of octaves. I'll do this on just the white keys so that I can get a nice even motion, and then I'll adjust everything to the exact key and scale later. When you're doing this, it's important to make the motion across the keyboard as smooth as possible so that the notes get recorded at a consistent speed. Don't worry about the overall speed in relation to the tempo of your music or where you start the recording yet. We can easily adjust all of that later in the DAW. In fact, it's probably best if you solo your harp track and turn off the click so that you're not distracted by anything else in your mock-up while you do this. Now I need to make this play in the correct scale and in the correct key. Now in this example, I'm using the Cineharps library from CineSamples. And this library has these very cool harp pedal controls that allows you to tune the white keys on the keyboard sharp or flat, just like a harpist tunes the strings on a real harp with their pedals. And when I turn on the gliss mode here, you can see that I've already tuned the white keys to that particular pentatonic scale that I'm trying to program here. Besides the convenience of being able to tune the white keys to the exact scale you need, one of the other great things about libraries with these kinds of pedal controls is that when you have a scale with fewer than seven notes in it, like a pentatonic scale, you end up with the exact same kind of enharmonic notes that you naturally get on a real harp. I have the C string tuned to C sharp and the D string tuned to D flat, so those are enharmonic equivalents. Then I have an E flat, F natural, then a G-sharp and the enharmonic equivalent A-flat, and then finally B-flat. So now if I play from E to E on the white keys on my keyboard, I'll get a pentatonic scale consisting of E-flat, F-natural, A-flat, B-flat, and D-flat, with the A-flat and D-flat being repeated enharmonically in each octave. And that sounds like this. Having those enharmonic notes really make a sample harp sound much more realistic. So now I can just keep all the notes that I recorded exactly like this on all white keys, but when I hit play, we'll hear them play that D flat major pentatonic scale starting from an E flat. There are several other great harp libraries out there that have pedal controls and produce realistic and harmonic notes just like this one. Another example that I like a lot is the Berlin harps, which includes two different harps, and you can see the pedal controls right here. I've tuned these to that same scale, and playing E to E on all white keys with it sounds like this. The next thing I need to do is make the harp glissando start and end in the right place and play in time with my sequence. So I start by trimming my MIDI region containing the notes I recorded so that it starts right at the measure where I want the glissando to eventually start. In this example, that's going to be measure 20. Then I'm going to go into the MIDI editor and move all the MIDI notes over so that the first note starts right at the beginning of the MIDI region. Now at this point, I should work a bit on the timing or spacing of the MIDI notes. 
as you change direction going from up to down or vice versa, it's natural that you'll slow down or even pause a bit. And so you end up with these bigger gaps that you see I have here. And I want to tighten up those gaps a bit so that I get a smoother and more flowing glissando. So I'm just going to temporarily make all the note velocities kind of the same here. And that just makes it easier for me to see where the big gaps are. And then I'll work on getting the correct dynamics from these velocities later. Now I'm going to take all the MIDI notes, except for the first one, and I'll move those MIDI notes a little earlier to close up that gap there. And it's of course important that I don't have any kind of snap to grid setting turned on when I do this, so that I can move the notes freely. So I'll just move these notes over like this, and then I'll repeat that for the next part here, selecting everything from the next gap until the end. So now I've smoothed this out quite a bit. And I don't worry about making every gap completely identical. You just want to avoid anything that sounds like the harp player stopped their hand motion. Okay, so now what I need to do is make the overall length of the glissando be correct. And I'll do that by first taking the MIDI region and trimming it so that it ends right where the last note in the glissando starts. This is important in order to get the exact length of the glissando to be correct and end on the right beat in the sequence as you'll see in the next step. In Cubase, the MIDI note changes color when it's outside the boundaries of the region. So that makes it easy for me to see when I've trimmed the region exactly to the start of the note. So I now have a MIDI region that starts right at the beginning of the first note and ends right at the beginning of the last note. And now what I can do is that I can use the time stretching tool in my DAW to compress or expand the length of this MIDI region. And the notes inside will be stretched or shrunk proportionally to that. Or I can speed them way up. So with that, I can now resize this MIDI region to make the glissando fit into the exact number of bars or beats that I need for my mock-up. The next thing I like to do is to make all the MIDI notes ring out a little longer. When you drag your hand across the keyboard, you tend to end up with very short MIDI notes, and that can make the harp sound a little damped or almost muted, as each sample is ending too soon. We want the harp to ring out longer so that we get a nice, rich, and resonant sound. So I'll just take all the MIDI notes and stretch them out so they're nice and long. It doesn't matter exactly how long you make them. They just need to be long enough so it doesn't sound like the notes are being cut off or faded out early. Let's take a listen to this now. Here it is again with the short notes. And again with the notes extended. And that sounds much nicer and more resonant. Now when I stretch the notes like this, I'll most likely end up with quite a few overlapping MIDI notes on the same pitch. And that is something we always want to avoid in MIDI sequences, because the end of the overlapping note will cut off the sound of the second note. To avoid that problem, I'll use this function in Cubase called Delete Overlaps Mono, which trims notes that overlap into adjacent notes of the same pitch so that they end right before the next note. And most DAWs will have a function that is very similar to this. The next step would be to adjust the velocities of the notes I just recorded to the desired dynamic shape. The only dynamic that is written for this glissando in this example is a forte. So if I were to interpret that literally, it would sound like this. That sounds like someone is trying to destroy the harp and is obviously way too loud and also doesn't sound like how a real harp glissando would. It's also a bit boring since it has no shape or contour to it. So I'm just going to redraw the velocities here to give it a more expressive and musical shape. I'll make it get a little louder as we go up and then a little softer as we come back down again. I could also do the opposite. The important thing is that it has some kind of shape and that the notes aren't all exactly the same. I'm also going to make the first and last notes just a little bit louder to try to accentuate the beginning and end of the glissando a little bit. One important thing to keep in mind while programming a harp glissando like this is that almost all playable sampled harps are made of samples of the harpist plucking single notes. 
which is different from how they would touch the strings if they were playing an actual glissando. A single plucked note is done with a stronger outward pull on the string, while for a glissando, it's a slightly less forceful sideways motion across the strings. To make the program glissando sound more like a glissando played on an actual harp, it's helpful to keep the note velocity slightly lower than the intended dynamic. A single note plucked at a forte dynamic will typically sound way too heavy for a glissando played forte. So I'm just going to take all the notes in the glissando and scale their velocities down a bit using the velocity compression tool in Cubase. And I'll also compress them a bit like this so the overall dynamic range of it is a little smaller. Let's take a listen to that. If you want to get fancy, you could also use an EQ and thin out the harp sound just a little bit. So let's try adding an EQ to this harp and see if we can make it sound a little thinner or lighter. Somewhere around 200 to 250 hertz might be a good starting point. And we're just looking to make the harp sound a little lighter. If we reduce that a bit, we'll soften some of that hard edge. Here it is bypassed. And here it is with that cut again. I think that sounds pretty good. We could also try to soften the kind of hard attack in the harp a little bit by looking for frequencies where a lot of that plucky character in the harp is located. Let's try something up here around two to 3,000 hertz. If we reduce that a bit, we'll soften some of that hard edge. Here it is bypassed. And here it is with that cut again. So that gives us an overall slightly softer and lighter sound that works better for a glissando. Okay, so now that we made all those adjustments, let's listen to the final result. Here it is first by itself. And here in the context of the full mock-up. So now, let's take a look at how we would do a glissando like this if we don't have a library with pedal controls and naturally occurring enharmonic notes. For this example, I'll use the harp from the Berlin Orchestra, which is just sampled chromatically with each note producing its corresponding pitch. And now, let's make it be the right scale and key. Most DAWs will have a scale quantize or scale correction function often as part of the transposing settings. So I've set the scale correction in Cubase to change this from an E Phrygian scale, which is what I get with all white keys going from E to E, to a C sharp or D flat major pentatonic scale. Let's see what happens when I hit transpose. So as you can see, we technically get the right scale. And since we go from a scale with seven notes in it to one with five notes in it, Cubase has to quantize some notes to repeat the same pitch. However, it's the wrong notes that end up getting doubled. So to make it as realistic as possible, I'm going to undo this scale quantize and just move the notes manually instead. So first, I'll take all the notes and move them down a half step so that the whole thing starts on E flat. Then I'll take every E natural and move it up a half step to get the F natural I need in the scale. And I'll repeat that through each octave. And then I'll take every F sharp and move it up a whole step to make it a G sharp or A flat. And I'll repeat that in each octave. And finally, I'll take every B natural and move it up a whole step to a C sharp or D flat. So now I have the correct scale with the correct enharmonic notes with the C sharp and D flat and G sharp and A flat enharmonic equivalents. And just like before, I now have a bunch of MIDI notes of the same pitch that overlap into each other so I'll just use this delete overlaps mono function again to fix that. So there you have it. That's how we can produce either a pentatonic or a hexatonic scale with the correct enharmonic notes in it 
using any chromatically sampled harp library. So have you ever tried to program a harp glissando? Did that work out for you or did you find it difficult to make it sound realistic? Was the process of tweaking it and getting there easy or hard for you? Please share your experiences in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in another episode of Virtual Orchestration. Thank you.